Good afternoon, Council. Uh, for the next slide in the Infrastructure and Public Works Division, we're going to be looking at the Olson Road Store Main. This was a project that was previously approved. You know, we actually went out to market on it, uh, and the price came back. Uh, I think it was 2021, or I believe it was 2021, came back uh, out of our budget. So we rescoped it again and, and repriced it, uh, with updated uh, construction costs for 2023. Uh, this project has been with council for, I guess, 10 years uh, by 2023. It was originally uh, intended to develop a storm drain pipe and a water main down on Olson Road. Uh, through that work on uh, putting the water main, a really large archaeological site was covered and project costs are soon eaten up uh, by the cost of the archaeological expenses. Uh, again, as I said, it had been previously approved. Uh, to, the funding sources are spread out between the levy uh, reserve and contribution from the Ministry of Transportation and Infrastructure. And feel free to stop. I'll, I'll pause briefly after each slide. Feel free to jump in. Um, There's gonna be a lot of slides, so it might be easier to do questions per slide versus at the end. Sorry, Nikki. It's not working. No. no. Yeah. Oh. Um, that, I'll just point at you. Uh, that uh, Neal Street and Village Green Improvements. Uh, this is a project uh, that Ms. Vermont mentioned uh, in her presentation. And this is a combination of our water main replacement, the AC water main between 3rd and 2nd Streets, and the uh, upgrade of the old drain uh, for the sports courts. It also involves the development of uh, parking and uh, a sidewalk to linking 3rd uh, Street to 2nd Street. Uh, again, um, and per Ms. Atiana's comments, Council can expect to see a number of these projects being combined in, in, into one. Um, Nikki, can we just look to that piece that I just gave us? I don't have a lot of, I don't have any photos or pictures in this, but uh, what we did just want to share, share with Council what the, the proposal is. This has been designed, I think, April 8%. 8% for the village green and 100% for the water main. Nikki, if you could just zoom in on that little snapshot there on the... Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just going to share it so the public members uh, on YouTube can see. So I'm just going to share the screen so everyone can go there. And so what we're going to be looking for is a zoom in on the image, which is the image there. So to the right, uh, Council can see Third Street. Uh, so the corner of Third and Neal is where the skate park is, and so we can see we have uh, a new bump out there, uh, some uh, formal road parking and a sidewalk that leads into some angle parking access to the uh, Village Green uh, that allows you to go right across the park uh, to the uh, you can go through this through this portion of the, of the park now to the uh, to the uh, the play park. Uh, and then continues along down that fairly steep hill uh, to Second Street, where it'll link up with our little uh, island of sidewalk uh, on this corner of Second and Neil. The upgrades to the tennis courts and all front jump in will have include uh, pickleball and tennis uh, lines, and then a new sport court for basketball. Thank you. Yeah, I can speak a little bit to the, uh, the village green aspects of this project. So in looking into the the, uh, the condition of both the basketball and tennis court. The basketball is in um, satisfactory shape, but the tennis court has serious subsurface um, <coughs> challenges um, that would require the not just the entire asphalt surface to be replaced, but the, um, the subsurface material as well. So it's quite extensive. Um, there would be an opportunity to use CNI levy for some aspects of this project, um, because it is replacement of existing infrastructure. Uh, the idea between the pathways there is to uh, provide accessible accessible access, wheelchair accessible access to both courts, and as well as making a better, better pedestrian connection to the, the other side of the park there. In addition, there would be a number of more formalized angle parking spots there, uh, as well as more formalized parking by the skate park. Currently, that road lacks the sidewalk entirely. There's no sidewalk, and so you know. I'm sure you've all experienced it. Um, but you can sort of walk down the center of the road, or perhaps on the gravel shoulder. Sight lines going down to Second Street are not great, uh, so it's it's quite quite tight there. So this would address all of those things, as well as the 
infrastructure um, project along the Middle Street. And April, just to, in terms of the, the access towards the, the Campbell Street, is this um, is this uh, accessibility as well, wheelchair or other mobility issues? So the access into the ports from Neal Street would be you know, meeting accessible grades. The access of uh, yeah. the wider path there is, is too steep oh, to, to achieve that. And so this is more of a maintenance access that would allow us to get you know um, uh, a small truck or, or what have you into the courts for next time we have to change out the, the posts or the nets or something like that. Thank you. Really excited about this. There's going to be some benches there to sit on in the courts. Oh. Uh, I believe there are. I'm not sure if it's shown in this drawing. I think the black, the black, the little box. black boxes there. I think are, are depicting storage, that. storage locker. I don't believe there is a storage locker identified, but there would be room to include something like that. So that's where the pickleball nets are stored at the moment. The little metal yeah. thing. Yeah. Through the chair um, and fencing. Um, is there any indication um, for the through the chair? <laughs> uh, this putting replacement of the fencing. We did look at whether the fencing could be reduced in scale somewhat, but just given the the activities that are happening there and the the adjacent uses, I think the fencing would likely need to still be yeah. at, at the height that it's at, but could be would be replaced with new fencing as part of this scope. And through the chair. Um, how do you think those trees will be affected? Um, through the chair, there are a number of largish trees adjacent to the skate park. Um, so I can picture this all in my mind, but uh, uh, on the Neal Street side, um, and this would hope to retain those trees. But as you know, once you get into excavating in and around roots, it, 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 trees may be impacted. It's, it's hard to say at this point until a little bit more detail is done. Okay, any further questions, comments on that? What's the timeline on this one? For 80% design, so if, if council provides positive feedback that this is something they want staff to look into, staff will come back with a more detailed budget and would hope to construct in 2023. Potentially spring 2023 as well. Okay, thank you. Uh, the next slide is for an asset manager program. This is a slide uh, uh, that has been previously presented to council, um, and it's basically a funding request um, for the asset manager program that's spread out over over five years. Uh, some mon monies have been expended or funds have been expended this year, uh, and then this is just the ongoing process of funding this program, uh, allowing us to develop an assessments and like big work. If we're successful in the grant program that I or the grant application I uh, described yesterday, you know we may come back to council and I'm not happy to, to present this. But for now, we, we just like to continue to move forward with with the program. Is the budget request just 2023 portion of it, or is that for the whole? That's the five years. <laughs> First Street dock improvements. Uh, we discussed this a little bit yesterday on our tour. Uh, currently, uh, we're uh, working with a, uh, with a constructor to build the West Slopes. So that project has been uh, awarded. Uh, we believe there will be some cost savings potentially within what we budgeted and what the, what the cost of the West Slopes is going to cost us. And if that's the case, develop the railings, as Simon described yesterday, uh, as well as uh, upgrading the ladders, which are failing into the water. If we're able to do that with the funds for that project, this number will come down significantly and come back to council with with uh with a lesser number right now this budget includes both the railings and the ladders so my hope is that i can come back to council in january with uh, a lesser number and again this is something that's spread out over five years it's the idea we have a condition assessment that identifies uh things that need to be replaced and the risk level of and, and allows us to know when and that's what exactly what this is this is kind of this is a this is a asset management we put a condition assessment report we put it into a budget that's what it's going to cost to maintain that, that, that uh, infrastructure. 
And sure. Sure. Thank you. Um, so just so I can wrap my head around. Yes. So in terms of that budget request, uh, 275, that was uh, specifically for the for the West float and potentially, or is that over the five year budgeted cycle? Yeah. So for the West float, uh, council approved three hundred fifty thousand right. dollars. Not yeah. separate from this. Okay. And okay. I, I believe Thank there'll you. be some savings in the three hundred fifty thousand dollars release to be budgeted that we're gonna that uh, Simon's gonna address with the uh, contractor, and 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 we may be able to fund some of that to that budget source and then and then move forward the lesser amount. Thank you. That, uh, yeah. Fourth Street up upgrades. Um, so this would see the upgrading of Fourth Street uh, in terms of replacing an asbestos concrete water main from Gibson to Campbell Street uh, and inclusion inclusion of a sidewalk along the east side of, of the road. So this project, um, again, the, so the water main portion of this project has been with council for a number of years. This project was designed with the Neal Street water main. They originated a project here together, but we split them out now so that we can Again, address the Neal and Village Green and the 4th Street upgrades. Um, there's still some more work to be done for staff to, to start getting a better number on the sidewalk portion of this project. It would also involve some drainage. Um, part of the reason it's been brought forth to council and, and, and the reason it's been brought forth and proposed for 2024 is its construction of the daycare at the school. So uh, we've received a number of complaints, uh, a, a couple this year for sure. Um, about walking on 4th Street uh, and the ability of, of students to access the school and, and just general community members. Uh, and so staff, um, when I spoke with our consultants earlier, uh, earlier this fall, to try to understand what a sidewalk might look like. And so this, again, would be that stacking of that project with an opportunity that's coming down the road. Um, this fund, the, the budget request as it is today, does not include anything uh, uh, south of uh, Gibson Street. So this doesn't include the school section of the of Fourth Street. Okay. If anyone knows where I live, it would end right there, and then we'd be we'd be talking to the school um, about frontage improvements, which that conversation has already started. And then, depending on how that conversation goes, this project may be extended to meet up with there. At this point, the idea would be again to run the sidewalk up from Campbell Street, so Wolf and the Fog side, connect into that sidewalk, yeah. come up, to then pedestrians would cross the road. Uh, uh, at that location, cross the road again, and then access the school. So we have a, a safe walking area from Campbell to the school. Could you just say that again? So coming up from Wolf in the Fog, extend up past uh, Ken's place? Past Ken's, so along Ken's uh, property, and then at Gibson, you'd cross the road. Cross at Gibson. Okay. And then you'd cross, cross fourth. Got it. To get there. Okay. We, Thank you. The sidewalk uh, aspect hasn't been finalized. We've had some con conceptual looks at it, uh, three different versions. And the uh, and we've looked at both sides of the road. So right now, this is what the engineers are, are telling us. We we saw a, a lot of work to do on the design side of that uh, of that project of the side of part of the project. And would that fit in with the uh, terms of project timeline twenty twenty four? Combining it with some of the work that's we know will have to be done there. Exactly. So this yeah. is so the fourth street water main project was approved by council uh, I think one or two years ago, and we finished that design. This is one hundred percent for the water main. So we know what we need to do there, and we have a, a fairly accurate cost. Uh, and then the addition is this is a sidewalk to that. Okay. Any further questions? Okay. Uh, LED street light replacement. Um, this is a project that has been uh, with the council before. Uh, we basically moved it uh, two years forward just to give us some time to uh, get our feet underneath us. What it is is the replacement of our of the older halogen bulbs, I believe, the halogen with the newer LED technology. Uh, which which provide uh, energy savings as well as reducing our, our maintenance costs. Um, if I may, through the chair, just these are comments from the public that have come to me so far about some of the new, I believe, under BC Hydro streetlight replacements. Uh, given that the new poles are taller, the uh, the scope of the light that's coming down is quite a bit higher than the old. Um, so basically it's lighting up the sides of more people's houses and their windows than they were before. Is there a way to take that into consideration? Uh, through the chair, I'm so sorry. Yes, um, it's one of the, uh, a bit of a passion project for me. Um, I love streetlights for driving safety, but I, uh, but they do uh, affect all residents. I have one that shines into my daughter's bedroom for 15 years, <laughs> 16 years. 
Uh, and so what we would do, this is one, this project would, uh, is only related to the district owned street lights. So that would be stuff like on Pfeiffer, uh, but nothing on 4th Street, but nothing on, on the highway. And um, because we're the ones purchasing it, as long as it meets the safety standards that we need and there are certain standards we have to maintain, um, we should be able to source out ones that have either tilted better or have uh, better coverage in terms of shading. Mm -hmm. It is also a, a conversation um, we can have with Hydro. I believe, and I'd have to check with uh, our superintendent, um, Stixon, uh, but I think that for an added cost, you can also deal with some of those hydro, those hydro ones as well, because they, they give you the kind of the, the base model. If you spend a little bit of money, you can get the, the better covers, but I don't, other than that, I don't have any further information to share, but I definitely can take a note and make sure we're looking into it. I appreciate that. Thanks. Okay. Move on. Okay. Fleet management. Uh, we talked about fleet a little bit today. Uh, we have our fleet that's in fairly good shape. Um, I just received an update and the average age of our fleet is about 8.5 years. Uh, we are considering uh, moving forward uh, in 2023 and onwards uh, a long-term leasing program with an outside consultant. We believe this can significantly reduce costs over the next 10 years. Uh, it'll prove the vehicle condition on average. So what happens now is we have a car that breaks down and needs to go for you know maintenance and it's under warranty. It takes us to staff to get out uh, sometimes more than a day, sometimes two trips. It, it's 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 a it's a resource uh, suck for us at the public works department. And so a car vehicles that are in better conditions and that are on schedule maintenance may help us take it out of town less and 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 provide ensure those resources stay in town. Uh, it'll help us improve accuracy of our budget forecast because we're going to have a very clear idea when we're replacing it and we're going to be replacing it earlier. And it'll provide us a stable budget over, over the next 10 to 20 years. Uh, I believe I'll have an update for council about what that actually might look like uh, at our next budget meeting. Okay, that's public works. Right, we're going to move straight into water. Uh, we've talked about this uh, at length, uh, and so it's the project timeline of 2023, so for next year. Uh, we have a request for proposal out for this. Uh, again, this is an idea to integrate all of our water knowledge, provide us a master plan, a capital plan, a DC bylaw, an emergency water plan, and a number of other documents to help us um, manage this water system. And as I said earlier, we uh, this the, the RFP should close in December. Uh, we may extend it to early January to, to generate some more interest. Uh, I spoke briefly about this yesterday. This is the Mears Island Natural Capital Asset Program. Uh, this would be a project where we would do uh, a survey of Mears Island uh, to quantify what's there. It's, it's the first step to uh, designating something as a natural capital asset. We think we can work with the municipal and when I mentioned the National Capital Asset Initiative to receive a grant that would fund half of, of this program. So the district would be responsible for half, and then this and this grantor would be responsible for the other half. Uh, again, it helps us work uh, with the Tilbrook First Nation. This is our water comes from Mears Island, which is, is designated as tribal park of the First Nation. And this allows us to start um, um, putting money aside in a reserve to help support the maintenance of what is a what is our watershed and forest? So the idea of treating that Mears Island like the same way we do a reservoir. So we put money aside every year to make sure that we can replace Bars Mountain Reservoir in 20 years. We want to treat the natural world the same way. It doesn't just benefit us in terms of what it provides in structure. It also provides all the environmental benefits and, and everything else, the tourism economy that's based off of, of that island. And through the chair, just a quick question. Um, I, in terms of jurisdiction, in terms of our ability as, as a municipality to uh, engage in this natural capital asset on Mears Island, um, could you maybe explain how that's possible? In yeah, through the chair, there, Council Sir, I'll do my best. Um, we're still early stages yet, so that would probably, so, so a, a lot of the funding here will be allocated to uh, with uh, negotiations or non-negotiations discussions with the local First Nations. So that's going to be the first step. Although it is tribal park and not district field land, we do have water licenses for that, and so we so you'd be looking working with our partners in the provincial government, partners at the local First Nation to understand that, and then find a way uh, that we can all work together on this. So 
work. So that's my hope. Again, it's uh, early stages yet. So. Um, Uh, the remote water monitoring and telemetry upgrades I spoke to earlier uh, in this meeting. Uh, is again, this project is just being pushed forward a year. Uh, I believe we've, I don't believe we, I did change the, uh, the budget request. Bay Street water treatment upgrade phase two. Uh, we spoke with the boat lift yesterday. This uh, project would follow on to phase one um, of our of our Bay Street uh, plant. It would uh, provide us with a second form of treatment at the Bay Street pump station. So currently, as we talked about yesterday, we we have one source of treatment there. We have the hypochlorite sodium hypochlorite solution, which we add to the water. Uh, this would add the UV technology as well, so the water would go through a ultraviolet light uh, and then be treated that way. This this project is quite expensive. Uh, this is an updated uh, 2022 number for the budget request. So that's increased uh, probably since last time council saw this. We have an active grant application and it was a strategic priorities fund uh, to fund this. So hopefully this will be a 100% grant funded. Uh, District lot 117 reservoir rechlorination station. I spoke about this earlier today. Um, again, this is would be a, a, a station similar to we have a stump dump, which treats water uh, after being stored um, and prior to being put back into our distribution system, we are working on a potential solution that would uh, allow us to remove this project sheet from the budget consideration through uh, work on the wastewater treatment plant. SCADA integration. Uh, we This project, again, we discussed a little bit yesterday, uh, is would be looking at 2024, 2025, when we come to the end of the wastewater treatment plant, this number is a bit of a placeholder. We think some of this may be funded through the wastewater treatment plant program. Um, and so we just want to, we'll be thinking, we'll be putting a finer uh, number on this in, in a year from now. Uh, the idea would be to integrate the new wastewater treatment plant uh, SCADA system with our current lift station and water system. So we have one system for our operators to access. Probably means relocating the system to the workshop or the office in the new wastewater treatment plant uh, building. The next four slides um, are, are all to do with Mears Island infrastructure, water infrastructure projects. They've been in the budget for, I want to say, five years, maybe, maybe longer. I haven't gone back and looked. Um, the funding requests on here were, were all uh, developed at that time. There is very little information in these budget sheets for me to, to draw off of. And so what I would like to do is I pushed all these projects at least one year forward from where they originally were so that we can use the water master plan and the water capital planning to reassess are these our priorities and then to identify them as projects and then, to re, and then I'm going to be rescoping them. Um, so number one, Creek repairs and upgrade. Again, we're going to formalize some temporary repairs uh, and extend the life of, of some piping that I believe runs through the forest. This again, which this is the creek that one of the creeks of three creeks that feed our Bay Street pump station and our high pressure system downtown. A Camasas water system improvements. So this is a project that I understand would see uh, some improvements to the uh, the treatment plant itself, where we visited yesterday, uh, as well as some reservoir upgrades on Mears Island to increase uh, the lifespan of that asset and the capacity of that asset. Close Creek water supply life extension, uh, again, would be something similar to the number one creek extension, uh, where you'd be extending life through that reservoir, valve and the piping systems. Uh, and you can see this one right now is scheduled for 2025. And then finally, back over on this side on the peninsula, uh, adjacent to the base street pump station is our filtration, our filtration, filtration tank, where the water is treated in the plant and then moved into a tank and then pumped up to, uh, uh, I believe that's the way it works. Maybe it's the other way. Maybe it goes in the tank and then pump through and up. Uh, so this, this is a small reservoir that's at uh, Bay Street. Uh, again, we're gonna, that tank's been in there for, I think, since the 80s, maybe even the 70s, so it needs to be replaced. Uh, and then upgrading the water filtration within that tank. Um, I will have more detailed information for Council after the water master plan about exactly what these projects look like and with better pricing. So through the chair, that was yeah, that was my question. So once that master plan is there, you'll be able to uh, maybe better inform the priorities and, and a probably more accurate uh, budget cost 
um, for these particular projects, and there may be other ones identified. <laughs> well, exactly. And then through the chair to council steer, we um, the math plan will give us kind of this overall. It's going to have everything, and then as one of the one of the other deliverables of that in that RFP is a twenty year capital plan. So it's going to say twenty years. So these are the, what we present to council in the five year financial plans or five year plans, and we want to get to a point where in twenty year plans, at least on the infrastructure side, so we we know where we're, we're looking out to, and we're not just five years at a time. So. I hope these are addressed through that process. Uh, wireless water meter installation. This is a project that we pushed out uh, to the end of the five year uh, financial cycle at this point. Uh, the number is a placeholder. The idea of this project, we talked about this yesterday at the wastewater, at the water treatment plant, is to develop a real time remote water meter monitoring network. What that might look like in reality with the technology that we currently have today would be. Uh, uh, some kind of uh, radio uh, communicator on our water meters like we currently have that we that we read by car every three months, but that tie into a receiver that potentially could live on uh, streetlights. So what modern communities, they put these receivers and streetlights and then that feeds back to our um, back our system. And so we can monitor on, you know, as, as often as we want. Um, that's, it's a bit out there. It's, it's all this technology exists communities use it, it may be a little bit out there for us right now, but I believe if we're going to um, run down um, all our options in terms of <laughs> conservation, including this will help us with leak detection and identify leaks before they start or as they start and address that um, and, and save that very expensive polished water. Okay, that was water, we have sewer to go. Is everybody okay with my pace? We're good. Uh, this is a previously approved project, uh, the biggest one I'll do in my career, I'm pretty sure, uh, or any of us. Uh, this is the wastewater treatment plant. Uh, it's underway. Uh, it's mostly funded by a uh, grant uh, that occurred by the district and some reserve. Lift station isolation valve. So again, this is an ongoing project that we again discussed yesterday in our tour. This is the project that sees us being able to isolate our wet wells. Uh, so that we can we can uh, move uh, effluent around them, um, so that our, our crews can get down them and undertake maintenance uh, and, and and do that work. So we have two more that we need to do. These are the final two: is the stations eight and ten. Uh, it won't be as big of a hole as it was for uh, I think lift station twelve, which we did last year and we discussed on our tour. The station generator replacement. Uh, again, this is an ongoing replacement of our uh, aging propane generators. There's gonna be a little bit uh, more uh, fine tuning applied by staff prior to the next council meeting um, to really nail this number down. We, again, there's a little bit of moving pieces with the wastewater treatment plant and its upgrades uh, with the conveyance portion of the wastewater treatment plant project uh, and replacing that. So um, stay tuned. The South Forks Main Project. Okay, so this is this large project that we spoke about yesterday, which extends from Lynn Road to Maltby. It would be uh, increasing the capacity of uh, the conveyance, the sewer conveyance system in that location. Uh, we've also included in this project, uh, previously the project was three projects, the twinning of the Forks Main, the Station 7 and the Station 13 upgrades. Because they're all related, we combine them into one larger project um, because they have to be designed together anyways. Uh, it has a quite a high uh, price tag, and staff still have to do some work to, um, to determine how we, this might be funded, whether it's by grants or, or for other opportunities that may be out there. Um, this project would be designed in 2023 and constructed in 2024. It's our hope that because of the resources that we currently have in town, that someone who is currently working in town um, doing this exact work may be able to bid on this and, and it is, you know provide some efficiencies in terms of mobilization and, and other items. Um, again, this is this area of town uh, from Maltby to uh, Lynn. It was identified as far back as 2005 as an area not to add more. If we have a condition report that says you do not add any more services to this. And since then we've added a number of resorts, so that's what you know, a number of subdivisions connecting to the Tulkia First Nations system and all that happened when we were told not to do that. So this is a system that we do get complaints about and is, is, is likely at capacity now. And so it's a conversation that we're currently having 
with any development applications that come from that area of town. We're having very up detailed servicing briefs to try to understand whether we can still accommodate how much and whether we can accommodate further growth in these areas. So related to this, but uh, the question of the latent uh, zoning ability for some of the um, uh, C5 zoning that would exist out past there, is that included in that thought process or is, is that separate from? So through the chair to Council of Steer, um, there is latent zoning there, but the district's maturing in its approach to latent zoning in the sense that we're requiring very detailed servicing brief at building permanent subdivision time where we're permitted to do so by legislation. And if we don't have the servicing to deal with what's been proposed, we're saying no at the infrastructure stage, even though the zoning might be there. And so you, you, and this has been happening now for about three months. Uh, you know, we get a, 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 a building permit or some other uh, development application, uh, get referred usually to planning. Now planning is asking us, we're taking it a number of talking with our engineers about that and then transmitting that back through planning. So that's something that's actively happening now. Uh, it, I haven't had a lot of development demand in South Topino recently. Um, and so I haven't actually had a conversation about enforcement with anybody there, but it, it's it's on our it's on our list. A slight digression, but through the chair, uh, the, maybe I'll save it. It's just is is there a recourse for say a, a, a potential applicant who has that latent rights, uh, and we're saying no based on that servicing, but they have it's well within their ability. We have is there recourse for them to come back towards the district uh, through the chair to council steer. It's my understanding that there, there's always recourse in the sense that people or individuals or corporations can you know, take the district to court for any number of reasons. Uh, it's my understanding that the, the ability of the district to actually service this with our stuff is what it is um, and that we would be, that we'd be successful uh, in those things. Or it's, that's my understanding. I can't say it so that it's because court is court and lawyers are lawyers. Um, but this is a very small conversation that we've had at this council table in relation to the Woodsmere zoning amendment, whereby we've been told um, by our legal counsel that at subdivision or building permit, we, we absolutely have the right to say no if we don't have the services. If, if council remembers what we did in that process was in, in addition to the subdivision building, we've actually, because it's in the zoning process, we added even more another covenant. So we had three, basically one that we set out there as a community, we're not gonna allow this development to move forward unless they have the unless we can provide the services. And then we also said to council, we have the same opportunity at subdivision by right, and we have the same opportunity at building per by right. So um, using that logic and that information would be the same for, for these locations. If we, if we can't provide it, they, no one can force us to do it. There is a conversation about whether somebody could offer to pay for those upgrades. So a developer, you could say to the developer, we don't have X service. Uh, if you'd like to continue with your development, you can, pay for X service. Um, and so that's a conversation that, that will probably come for the council. It's probably a conversation that we're gonna be having more often in the next five years. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, just so I understand, um, how does, so this multi Lynn Road lift stations, now Ty Stannis and SOS, do they would pump into that or? They yeah, uh, they currently do. So we, how, if they continue to develop at a exceeding rate that, how does that play into effect of ours? So um, I'm gonna to try to answer the best I can. That's if you chair to Council Schoolman. I'll try to answer the best I can and I may look to um, Satiana to help me out with this one. So we're currently uh, received the, uh, the effluent from Tyson as was under what is called a uh, municipal type servings agreement, an MTSA. And that's an agreement that sets out what we what receive and what the payment is and, and that, what, that, 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 what that relationship looks like. Um, as part of the original MTSA, we received funds from the Slovak First Nation to do these upgrades. They, they, we made them aware at the time. We received the funds back in whatever it was, 2008 or 2009. And we put that aside into a reserve account. Those funds will be used as one of the funding sources will be those, um, those amounts. So that's sort of to do with these upgrades. As their community continues to grow, I'm not sure if the current MTSA has has that language in there yet, or is it going to require a uh, uh, further negotiation or discussion about it's a, if, if, if as a community continues to grow, is there room with MTSA to address that? I think that's probably the, we'll, okay. where we'll leave things in okay. terms of an update to council, and I, I can bring this discussion back to later at a later date with council. 
Is that good for now? Okay. I think that's it. Uh, thank you. Um, I'll hand it over to Good job. Okay. Good partner for next steps. Steps. Well, that is it. That is that is what we we set out today to to update council on where we are in 2022 and give a, a overview of where we're looking for in 2023. It certainly when it looks up for capital, we'll bring back the operating piece at the next meeting. Um, but we certainly welcome your feedback and input in in terms of what if if there are pieces there that you would like to see more of or less of, we certainly welcome that input. Um, I want to, um, so, the, so the next uh, December, January, we're gonna take the time to balance that budget to bring, bring things together and then present in, in early February, a meeting at the meeting of the whole, uh, present that operating budget and capital um, in the, Following that, we'll make presentations to our stakeholder stakeholder groups and, and uh, public engagement. And then following that, we will have a, a wrap up uh, budget meeting where we will present that financial plan and financial plan bylaw and then proceed into the tax rates bylaw. So that'll happen March, April time period. Uh, and then uh, uh, we need to adopt those bylaws before May 15th. So that's our next steps. There's a lot. There's a lot of pieces in there for sure, and in there is is also the adoption and, and review of the uh, audited financial statement for 2022. We'll have that as well. Um, so any questions before we wrap up? I just wanted to thank my colleagues. Thank you for everybody. I know that our team is still in this room, but. We, it was a definite team effort here, and uh, I thank everybody for for this wonderful meeting. I think it went well. So thank you. Satisfied with the information and any comments on the process? Everyone's happy with that content? Okay. Um, I guess if there's nothing else, we'll move on on the agenda. And, um, uh, can we have a question from the public? <coughs> Yep, that, that's the next item on the agenda. Okay, so we have a question period, uh, item number seven, and I'll turn to corporate services to see if there's anybody in the audience that has a question. Uh, thank you, Chair Anderson. We do have a member of the public who's requested to um, submit a question. So Mr. Brad Linterman has uh, requested to submit a question. So I'm going to allow Mr. Linterman to speak now. And Mr. Linterman, if you're there, um, you can uh, address council by stating your name, your address, and the item number or the subject that you're uh, submitting a question to council on. Uh, hi there. Yeah, I'm Brad Linterman. I'm uh, my address is 933A uh, Hardy Place. Um, uh, my question for the council and uh, maybe for the just the finance uh, committee would be, um, what is the plans for outside of the co-op main street uh, sidewalk? Um, we've there's been a lot of uh, customers who've um, you know gone over top of their shopping carts. Employees there have gone over top of their shopping carts. And we're just curious on the timeline for that um, upgrade to that sidewalk. Okay, um, I'm not sure who on staff might be working with uh, on that right now. I'll ask our CAO. Thank you, Councillor Anderson. So this is the question period and opportunity to, for members of the public to ask council questions. Um, if staff are required to provide content for, for these questions, and we do so at a later date, um, I don't believe we'd have that information available at this time. Okay. Um, as far as I know, I don't think any council members have any more information than staff might bring forward at a future date. Um, Mr. Lynchman, um, we'll have to address your question at a future date. 
Um, well, could we respond to the question directly to Mr. Linterman or should he attend another meeting? So what, uh, what Mr. Linterman can do is send his contact information to corporate services at tifino.ca and we will be able to respond by email. Okay, Mr. Linterman, that's the best we can do today. Of course, staff came prepared to answer questions on the budget, and that's uh, a little bit off the agenda, but uh, we'll deal with it the best we can. Thank you. Okay. And are there any further members of the public or any further questions from Mr. Linterman? <laughs> Uh, thank you, Chair Anderson. Uh, we don't have any other members of the public in attendance, but I will ask if Mr. Lynchman does have a follow-up question or a second question he'd like to ask. Is he still here? Uh, no, no other question. Okay. That's the last item on our agenda, aside from adjournment then. So I'd look to Council for a motion to adjourn. Moved by Councillor McMaster, second by Councillor Sawyer, I believe. <laughs> Three seconds. I was distracting first, but I will okay. second it. All right. All in favor. Motion is carried. We are.